Good day to everyone, and thank you once again for inviting me to talk to the Loyola Schools faculty. You have probably seen that comic strip on the internet, a cartoon dog calmly and casually drinking coffee while the room is catching fire all around. The This Is Fine comic strip, drawn by cartoonist Casey Green in 2013, has been viewed in various memes signifying indifference or resignation. Recently, variations of the This Is Fine meme are being used as fitting visuals to represent humanity. Our common home, Earth, is literally burning and we humans are still proceeding as if things are okay. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres last August 9 said an alarming quote heard around the world, code red for humanity. He was of course referring to the latest findings of the UN Climate Change Report which presented us a long laundry list of the damage we have been doing to our only home. Evidence now clearly points to us, humans, as the main driver of climate change. It is unequivocal that human influence has warmed the atmosphere, oceans, and land, as the report bluntly put it. We have caused a lot of damage that will take years to recover from. The science is actually saying it could take centuries, even millennia, to think that we have been on this planet for a fraction of its entire existence, we have been abusing it at a dangerously fast rate. Instead of being stewards, we have become Earth's abusers. The alarms have been sounding for years, but we have kept on hitting on the snooze button for far too long. Now, we need to truly wake up because this is definitely not fine. Many have claimed that environmental degradation is the existential grand challenge of the 21st century. It is also a justice issue because of the disproportionate impact of pollution, droughts, flooding, and other environmental threats on people who are poor or marginalized, future generations, and non-human species. Already, climate change displaces tens of millions of people annually, a figure that is expected to balloon by mid-century. Mining and deforestation have further forced indigenous people from their ancestral lands, often leaving the land poisoned with toxic chemicals. In urban areas, pollution from landfills and hazardous waste sites is more likely to be located near communities living in the peripheries. While some countries continue to consume natural resources at unsustainable rates, it's only because many people live in poverty and the planet has yet to blow past its limits. Some studies suggest that as many as five Earths would be required to sustain first world standards of living for everyone on the planet. The connections between environmental degradation and poverty have been a key issue for Pope Francis throughout his papacy, particularly in his 2015 encyclical, Laudato Si, on care for our common home. In that teaching document, he asked all people to hear both the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. In Laudato Si, the Holy Father presents to us, us meaning humanity, not just the Catholic faithful, a blueprint which we could all use as we work towards taking care of our only home. Laudato Si has been hailed as a landmark encyclical that is part of the wider conversation on our responsibility towards the planet and to each other. The document gives us more than just a framework to responding to environmental challenges. It is our guide as we work towards healing, inclusivity, and reform. Ateneo de Manila, as an institution, a ministry, and a community, is in a unique position to lead in both the conversations around environmental justice, as well as in putting into motion the changes needed to be done. Before the year 2021 ends, our university is slated to be part of the first cohort of colleges and universities globally that will make an institutional commitment to participate in Pope Francis's seven-year journey towards integral ecology. This seven-year journey has been defined as an action-oriented ecological conversion process in the spirit of integral ecology. The goals are defined as these. Response to the cry of the earth 
is a call to equitably address climate change, biodiversity loss, and ecological sustainability. Response to the cry of the poor is a call for global solidarity, with special mention even to vulnerable groups such as indigenous communities, refugees, migrants, and children. Ecological economics acknowledges that the economy is a subsystem of human society, which itself is embedded within the biosphere, our common home. Adoption of sustainable lifestyles is grounded in the idea of sufficiency, living with just enough and not excess, to ensure a good life for all. Ecological education refers to the need to rethink and redesign curricular and institutional reform in the spirit of integral ecology to foster ecological awareness and action. Ecological spirituality encourages greater contact and connections with the natural world in the spirit of wonder, praise, joy, happiness, and gratitude. Community engagement and participatory action is crucial to care for creation at local, regional, national, and international levels. In my remarks to the AUN EEC Conference on Cultivating Ecological Mindsets and Lifestyles last November, I noted that the youth of today are already conscious of their responsibility towards the earth. But at the same time, we are living in a world where consumerism is at the center. This is our main challenge as educators. Education in environmental responsibility can encourage ways of acting which directly and significantly affect the world around us. Education and formation that embody the essence of Laudato Si should be all-encompassing. Teaching how to take good care of the planet includes both a deep understanding of the science behind it, as well as being able to impart to students the sense of community, living within our means and sustainability. Our biggest responsibility lies in ensuring the people who learn from us also learn about being responsible stewards of our home in all aspects. In 2019, the Society of Jesus adopted four universal apostolic preferences, showing the way to God, walking with the excluded, journeying with the youth toward the hope-filled future, caring for creation, our common home. Father Arturo Sosa, Jesuit Superior General, declared these preferences are not priorities that pit one sort of apostolic work against another, but integrated actions that work together like fingers in a hand. They are attitudes that must characterize each and every Jesuit work, he said. Father General said that in the aftermath of the coronavirus pandemic, which he compared to the cannonball that struck St. Ignatius of Loyola during a battle in 1521 and triggered his personal conversion, it will be young people who construct a new narrative of hope, and Jesuit schools can offer them the tools for opening up a new path. The Universal Apostolic Preferences provide a roadmap for a more just society that recognizes the fragility of the planet, that fights to end the squandering of resources, the depletion of our forests, oceans, and lakes, that better cares for all our natural resources, with the goal of leaving a better environment to those who will follow us. As the global community seeks solutions to climate change and other environmental threats, Jesuit colleges must lead by example and provide education aimed at creating a more just and sustainable world. Directives from Pope Francis and the Society of Jesus on caring for God's creation makes it critical that Jesuit schools put those principles in practice on their campuses and in their curricula. That includes joining, the new Vatican's Ecological Action Initiative and making environmental sustainability a core class for all students. We're being called by so many of our Jesuit and Catholic leaders to really step up as Jesuit universities and take this on and move it into action. Ateneo de Manila aims to join the Vatican's new Ecological Initiative seven-year journey towards integral ecology. Over the course of seven years, we will both promote and implement the Sustainable Development Goals and the Laudato Si Goals, working to bring our current and future work closer to the core of the encyclical. Our aim is for Ateneo de Manila to become a Laudato Si University. This won't just be a shallow designation, 
We aim to truly integrate its spirit into our mission. Becoming a Laudato Si University is really a call for us to incorporate environmental sustainability into the mission of the university, the strategic plans of our organizations, and certainly into the curriculum and into campus operations. We are never going to come up with environmental solutions if we're just thinking about it through the lens of science or the science of ecology. The fields of the sciences, engineering, human health, political science, governance, ethics, religion, humanity, social sciences, economics, and business all have roles to play in developing just environmental solutions. To close this talk, let me go back to the meme I earlier shared. A few years after the cartoon was released, the illustrator Casey Green followed it up with an updated version. It was a reaction to what he called every insane news piece in 2016. This time, the dog snapped out of its indifference to the blaze around it and finally screamed, this is not fine. And this time, it scrambled to put out the fire. Like the dog in the cartoon, I hope that we have finally snapped out of the stupor of indifference as our house is burning down. Things are definitely not fine, and we individually and collectively have the responsibility to act. It is not yet too late. It begins here, now, and we in Ateneo de Manila can and should lead the way. It was a pleasure talking to you today, and may this semester's faculty day be fruitful.